This time on Roadkill, the rot lives again! <laughs> At least for the next 30 seconds or so. I can't see what makes Roadkill one of the most sought-after automobile-themed reality TV shows is due to the fact that David Freiberger of Hot Rod Magazine hosts it. David's experience as a magazine editor, coupled with a vast experience in the motor world, is all he needed to draw subtle attention to himself. A little time with the great Boyd Coddington of Hot Rod surely helped shape his career. The show is primarily filmed in Southern California, but some episodes have been filmed in some parts of the United States, Australia, and Canada. Roadkill aired on YouTube from 2012 until 2018, when Motor Trend announced it would move the program exclusively to Motor Trend On Demand. David Freiberger isn't an internet person, and his time on national TV has been cut short due to Motor Trend's new policy, which is why we are bringing to you what really happened to David Freiberger. Let's dive in. This is the biggest order I've ever placed at Summit Racing. 3,400 bucks worth of stuff from Summit all at once. That's what happens when you're on a short schedule. David Freiberger is an American automotive enthusiast and chief editor of Hot Rod Magazine and Hot Rod Garage. David, just like other car enthusiasts we have today, built his life around cars, and his passion for cars dates back to his childhood. Safe to say, his duties since childhood revolve around the car industry. David started his career as a spare parts seller at a Dodge dealership after graduating from high school. Since then, he has held many positions in the car industry that have enabled him to accumulate wealth. He has been able to amass wealth through assets, car restorations, and earnings from the different positions he served in the automotive world. David's vast collection of cars revolves around classics and vintages dating back to the 1950s. The most iconic is the F-Bomb Camaro. After his years at Hot Rod Magazine, where he held different positions for close to 30 years, including TV and radio show hosts, before rising the ranks to chief editor. He held an editor's position at Rod & Custom Magazine, too. He has hosted video episodes of Roadkill, where his knowledge and expertise have gained him a huge mileage in viewership due to richly informative content. While David has amassed his wealth through the car industry, his knowledge and passion for cars have paid for it. David Freiberger has a net worth of over $3 million as of 2022, with most of his wealth coming from salaries and earnings from the shows. He allegedly takes home just over $110,000 annually from Hot Rod Magazine, alongside other benefits. Just this February, he celebrated his 30th anniversary at Hot Rod Magazine. A man that brings value to any business deserves to be celebrated, right? David has also worked for some top magazines in the past. The likes of Carcraft and Four Wheel and Off-Road also honor him frequently. David, unlike other car hosts, has his own YouTube channel with over 70,000 subscribers. For someone who dishes out valuable information about cars, 70,000 subscribers might just be the starting point for him and his channel. The earnings from YouTube are kept private, so there is a probability that David might be up there with the industry big boys in terms of net worth. David's interest in vintage cars has his garage booming with some beauties that have ruled the car industry back in time. David says he has made five engine swaps to the Dodge Super B acquired at 17 years old in a recently released video. In a social media post where he shared details about his collection, David confessed to having owned over 170 cars in his life. The oldest is a 1942 Ford GPW Green. Over time, Chevrolet cars have dominated his garage amongst Dodge, Jeep, Pontiac, and Plymouth. He also has a 1969 Ford Mustang that served as a daily driver, a 1973 Pontiac Ventura, F-Rod Chevy Impala, 1995 Chevrolet Camaro, and Chevrolet Crusher, among other vintage cars. One thing about car enthusiasts that have a collection of cars is that it's a worthy investment. Unlike modern cars, vintage cars hold their value in the market well. It's due to their unique looks and the fact that they are rare to get. They give one a sense of uniqueness and a feeling of prestige. Although the process of vintage car restoration could be hellish due to the outdated technology and vague designs, some set of people prefer classic cars just like that, and this is what David capitalizes on. He is always looking for specific cars that could return some good value once restored. A couple of years ago, a social media account hinted that David Freiberger was dead, and that was it. Fans and admirers poured in their condolence messages all over his social media, and the news escalated to all other 
numerous social media platforms. The account that started this news remains unknown, with many people saying the account was deactivated a short while after posting the info. So, is David Freiberger dead according to the information and the condolence messages? Well, David Freiberger from Roadkill is not dead. The rumors are brewing out of nowhere and do not hold any truth. How the rumor started remains a mystery till today, but it seems it was born out of hate from the user who posted it. David Freiberger didn't suffer any life-threatening disease or sustain an injury for such news to be posted. To make matters worse, the rumor trended on Twitter for hours, which caught the attention of some of David's associates before they started to debunk the rumor. One of the replies that subsided the rumor on Twitter was from a close associate of David who must have contacted him to verify. We do not know what's actually cooking behind this. Adding David Freiberger to the list of celebrity death hoaxes is just pathetic. Since David Freiberger wasn't involved in any accident or held down with the disease, fans decided to do some findings on their own and trust them to do that diligently. There are some sections of people who really want to get to the roots of the news, but due to the deactivation of the account that started it, it all proved abortive. So fans speculated about what could make the account tweet such news. Amidst the confusion, fans believe that the show David is connected to is named Roadkill, which might have been the reason behind the death rumors. Truly, that could be it. The original poster could have just glanced through something related to David Freiberger and Roadkill, and in haste to be the first to tweet resulted in spreading a rumor. Some fans also believe that some small blogs are at the rumor due to yellow journalism intended just for clicks. Whatever the reason is, it's never okay to chase clout with death. Doing it for mere traffic to a blog site makes it more distasteful. Fortunately, David Freiberger is hale and hearty chasing the bag on screen while living his life privately. David is quite active on Facebook and not on Twitter because he hasn't come online to clear the air about his rumored death. Although he posts about his work sometimes on his Facebook page, David is happily married, but due to his private life, he has not let happenings of his romantic life out in the media. That is a smart move by David, I must say. Many celebrities don't know how important private life is to their family. The fact that you enjoy it doesn't mean others do. For someone like David Freiberger, who has been rumored to have died, keeping his wife and children's information out of reach of outsiders is commendable. David is really strict with his private life that fans are often unsure how old he is. Several internet outlets have incorrectly speculated and reported on David's age. While it's unclear why, many websites claim that he was born on August 21st, 1946. The confusion is evident in several GearHead message boards. He still looks pretty good for a guy in his 70s, right? Except he's not in his 70s. Be careful what you read on the internet. Some of it is bogus. Meanwhile, David's private life needs to be studied at the college. We all make mistakes at some point in time, and David isn't any different. When he was editor-in-chief for CarCraft, he turned down a chance to partner with the producer on a wacky new car show because he thought no one on earth would want to watch it. That show became Monster Garage. Yes, the same American TV show aired on Discovery Channel and was hosted by Jesse James. Not just that, David also blew a chance to affiliate his magazine with Pink's, a successful drag racing show, which would have been a perfect marriage for both media entities. Even so, his successes far outweigh his failures and his long career, and it might just be the beginning for him as Roadkill is everything you wish other automobile-themed shows could be. David remains one of the greatest when it comes to the car industry. His knowledge and expertise on the show contribute to the huge number of followers he has, and while we hope to see more of his editorial skills in car magazines, we also want him hosting car shows due to his vast knowledge. But can we eat our cake and still have it? I sincerely hope so.